The subject of this video is the Counter IED ECM Protection Range Estimator, and the purpose of this video is to provide an update. This is new technology which requires an industry partner, and the user community has been alerted and it is interested. And specifically, the update is about field trials results, and more specifically, I'll answer the question, how well does this thing actually work? The answer is, if the attack scenario is perfectly known, as it sort of is when we're doing field trials, then the PRE device predicts a protection bubble size to an accuracy of about 1 to 2 meters over 120 meter test range. And I'll, I'll crisp up that statement in a minute. But nevertheless, we want to see some proof about that, so let's take a closer look. The uh, tests were done on a flat asphalt test range like this, um, where we measured the ground truth ECM protection bubble size. There was an ECM antenna uh, at one end on a wooden test stand, an IED receiver on another wooden test stand which was moved up and down the test range and farther out from view. Uh, the IED trigger transmitter was down here. Now we measured uh, the protection bubble for four different attack scenarios. This one is called the collinear attack scenario because all the three main elements are on a single straight line um, and it's also the easiest one to look at in a single photograph. Um, and we measured uh, the protection bubble for three different ECM power levels uh, high power, medium power and low power. So let's take a look at some results. Here's a graph where the vertical axis is the probability of observing the ECM effectiveness toggle range. That's a fancy way of saying the outer boundary of the ECM protection bubble. And the horizontal axis is range or distance from the ECM antenna, which is off on the left-hand side at zero. So here are the results, the measured ECM protection bubble for the high-powered ECM case. Now, green means that the, uh, the, the jammer was able to deny service between the trigger, uh, transmitter, and receiver. So green means we're inside the protection bubble. And now I'll take a minute just to crisp up that definition. Let's take a closer look at where the ECM bubble stops working. Um, it, the edge starts to get, look a little ratty. So what I want to say is an important statement. We cannot claim to predict the protection bubble size to an accuracy better than that to which the bubble itself can be measured or, or even exists. So when I say an accuracy of one to two meters, I'll let the pictures talk for themselves, but it's a, a more elaborate conversation we'd have in this, than we can have in this short video. So for the high powered case, the measured protection range is about 66 meters, and the PRE device predicts a protection range of 66 meters. When we turn the volume down on the jammer a little bit and take the medium power case, the pattern of uh, service denial looks like this, and the measured protection range is 55 meters. The PRE device predicts a protection range of 54 meters. Turning the volume on the jammer down to the low case, the measured protection range is 40 meters, and the PRE device predicts for this scenario 40 meters. So let's see what that actually looks like. I'd like to show a short video clip here. In the middle of this image is an IED receiver on a wooden test stand. Uh, there's an ECM transmitter off to the right and then trigger signal transmitter off to the left. And the IED receiver in the middle of this picture makes a whistling sound when it receives the trigger signal. Service denial test. The receiver which you're looking at now is 80 meters from the transmitter, which is downrange, and 40 meters from the transmitter, which is here. The ID and the effect depends on body position. If I block the transmitter, the IED transmitter, the trigger transmitter, there's no breakthrough. But when I stand fairly far away, there is a breakthrough, intermittent breakthrough. Now let's change it by a meter. Toward the jammer. We still have breakthrough. Another meter. Now it's 78 meters. Less breakthrough, or none unless I stand in front of the jammer.
even a hand can do it. Should do. Was doing it. Well, not in this case. That was a two meter change. And we having no breakthrough now. Transmitter height, uh, ECM height is 1.7 meters and threat transmitter height is uh, uh, 1.5 meters. There's an important clarifying point I need to make here. Although all the measurements to determine the ground truth protection bubble size were necessarily done with wooden test stands, the PRE device itself was mounted on an EOD robot when estimating the protection bubble size. The robot, uh, by the way, was provided by i Technologies as a professional courtesy. Using the robot makes the results doubly interesting because the effect of the robot chassis, which is metal, is automatically included in the results. And we found that uh, the robot chassis has a negligible effect on the PRE device, uh, at least for these tests. We did the same tests with the trigger on a tower. So the IED transmitter is here, the ECM transmitter is here on the asphalt part of the test range, which you can see in the distance, and the IED receiver was moved up and down the asphalt test range to see where triggered breakthrough happens. Okay, let's take a look at the results for the tower tests. Now this is the same graph as we saw before, and the axes have the same meaning. Um, the top of the graph shows the measured ECM protection bubble for the high ECM power case, and the bubble size is uh, 78 meters. I can, you may notice that there's a, uh, the green goes all the way across uh, from short range to long range, which is a kind of a bite out of it in the middle. And the reason for that is shown on the next slide. I won't go into the detailed explanation here. You can pause the video and have a look at it, but you can see at close range the ECM is effective, and then at medium range uh, there's a, a danger area where the uh, ECM cannot uh, deny service between the transmitter and receiver, and then at long range the ECM becomes effective again. And in addition to the effects that are shown on this graphic, there's also a grove of trees um, at the test range uh, that occlude the trigger signal at long range, which makes the ECM look more effective than it otherwise would be, which is yet another demonstration of why you need a PRE type device in concert with uh, ECM. So anyway, here are the, here's the measured protection bubble. The output of the PRE device uh, is here. Now this situation is different than the previous one, than the collinear case, because there are a bunch of things that we don't know in this attack scenario. For example, we don't know very much about the ground between the tower and the roadbed. Um, it's covered with scrub uh, brush. Uh, we don't know how level it is. We don't know what its shape is. We don't know what its reflective properties are. So under these circumstances, the PRE device produces a probability density function, which is shown at the bottom part of this graph. Um, and the colored part is uh, the 95% confidence interval. And uh, uh, the uh, median protection range for the PDF is 79 meters, which by coincidence is uh, a meter away from the uh, uh, measured protection bubble size. The story for the medium ECM power looks like this. We, have, we see a bigger bite out of the uh, ECM effectiveness um, uh, graph, uh, protection bubble. The protection bubble perimeter is at 68 meters. The PRE device, the PDF, has a median uh, value of 55 meters. And in the low power case, the protection bubble perimeter is at 26 meters, and the PRE device predicts a median value of 30 meters. Now, in all cases, the measured protection bubble perimeter lies within the 95% confidence intervals of the uh, produced by the PRE device. We also did some tests with a trigger in a, in a roadside ditch. Now, this, this situation is even more different. In this one, if you look at the bottom part of the graph, um, there's a convex propagation element. Now, there's, there's no element in the propagation model right now, internal to the PRE device, that has a convex element. It's just not coded. But what we can do is reconstruct the protection bubble from propagation measurements to see if we're on the right track. And here's what happened with that. Uh, we see a good match, anyway, between the measured and, and predicted uh, 
production bubble from the measurements. So here's our usual graph, and uh, this is a graph of measured protection bubble for the high ECM power case. This is measured using the IED receiver. If we take all our propagation measurements and uh, reconstruct the uh, trigger breakthrough or the ECM protection bubble, we get the pattern underneath. And the predicted uh, value is uh, 61 meters, which is you know good agreement with the directly measured protection bubble. We didn't have an e a middle and me medium power, but we did the measurement for a low power case, and the measured protection bubble in this case is 30 meters, and the reconstructed one from pure propagation measurements is uh, 30 meters also. So hold that thought. I'd like to uh, try to humbly channel Steve Jobs uh, for the next little section here by asking a question, what if? What if the US military attended a demonstration where the protection bubble size was predicted by a PRE device? And then the ground truth protection range were measured and it was shown to lie within a few meters of the predicted size. What if the demonstrated confidence is 95%? You repeat this many times and you get the same answer. What if the device were integrated into a GPS navigators for real-time convoy protection? What if the protected areas were visible on the navigator so you could see where your vehicles are? What if the vehicles were marked? We have the possibility with a PRE device of what I would call proactive protectees. What if convoy vehicles and dismounts could adjust themselves to stay inside the protection bubble? Or even better, would we have reactive jammers? What if we had a proactive jammer? What if the jammer operator adjusts his location in real time to cover soldiers or assets that are about to leave the bubble. So the, 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 the onus is not on the protectees to stay in the bubble. The onus is on the jammer to manage itself to keep assets safe. What if you could see protectees on a tablet PC or a cell phone with their protection status superimposed? Like this. You know, the same idea as the uh, uh, iPad Starwalk app, which, which uses the digital compass and accelerometers in the iPad and a forward-facing or rear-facing camera. What if we could superimpose this on the, on the field of view? I mean, this is 2012. This is, this is straightforward to do once you have an estimate of the protection bubble size. What if EOD support crew had a heads-up display that told them the safety status of an uprange tech? or in the unlikely event that the tech wasn't carrying ECM with him? Or what if you had ECM plunked down on the ground and you could see you know, the problem areas uh, before you get there? Uh, what if soldiers and convoy vehicles didn't have to think about their protection status because the jammer crew are monitoring it for them and correcting it for them? What if this integration of this technology into counter ID ECM products was a condition of purchase two years from now? What if the software to do all this was an app that ran, for example, on a commercial off-the-shelf spectrum analyzer or on uh, some other commercial off-the-shelf equipment? And here it is, in fact, actually running on a Tektronics um, arbitrary waveform generator. Just for fun. It does work. Or what if it ran on an EOD robot, such as provided here by i Technologies here in Ottawa on a loan? Or what if it ran on a, on a phone that talks to a jammer which has all the smarts in it? What if the device worked with a reactive jammer um, so the jammer could get information about the power it's delivering to where the protectee is? I've talked about this before in other presentations, uh, like in a ping mode, like a submarine. This is the cost of care for injured, injured soldiers uh, since 2001. That's U.S. dollars and U.S. soldiers. What if governments could buy a technology that could lower this cost? I mean, it won't get it all the way down to zero, uh, but if we eliminate 
RCIEDs, then that number goes down. The technology for this device exists right now, but the device does not. But with the right champion, it could. Patents for the PRE device have been awarded in the United Kingdom, Australia, and the United States, and it's pending in Western Europe and Israel. And this concludes the presentation.